Hi. I want to introduce you to a paper theater. People are looking, it's getting close, close to Christmas. People are looking for creative toy things for kids of all ages. They can write plays. They can produce their own characters, uh, paint their own sceneries. This is a great toy. And hey, I built this one myself, so let's face it, anybody could do it, right? I wanted to let you know, this is a proscenium. Some of the paperwork I was able to go online, put in paper theater, and Kennex Corners came up, so you can still buy some of this stuff. I don't know how much longer they'll be around, but uh, it's worth a try, because once they, I don't know where you would go after that. Paper theater is still very popular in Europe, evidently, not so much here. But we'd like to see it come back because it's really cool. The proscenium on this theater actually is large enough so you can hold curtains up here and you don't even see them, which is awesome. Let me show you how, how we um, change curtains. This is built very much like a real theater. You have weights. In fact, let me show you one. Ah, sorry about the grunt. Okay? Here is one stick that holds one curtain. You got fish eyes here, eye screws, sorry, and uh, just clamps, office clamps. Although next time I get clamps, I think I'll get the half inch ones. The quarter inch are really tight to pull. It's loose enough. There's like three fishing weights in the bag. They're lead, so they're in plastic, and then I tied them up in little uh, cloth bags. Cloth bags are color coded three different colors. For three different sets uh, white green and like pink for a third one so when you're going for the curtains you just drop the pink ones or you drop the white ones and you know you've got them all color coordinated to your curtains for that act um, three fishing weights one curtain and they're kind of counterbalanced so it doesn't actually fall unless you push it up okay by the way, I do like the wider, this is a one by two, as opposed to the three quarter inch, which they had suggested. This one, when you pull the curtain, the thing flips, and then the wood is on top of the string. You can't really lower it without lifting it, because it doesn't flow easily. So it's easier to use a one by two instead. I don't know if you can see it, but I will try to show you one of these. In a paper theater nowadays, they have sticks. You mount the character on the end of the stick. It ends up that you can put the character here, back and forth across the stage. If I want him to go back here, I have to move him off stage and bring him back. Can't really go through the curtains because you run into problems. Um, in my paper theater that I had back in the 1950s, yeah, I know, I'm old, um, we used to have magnets. So I went to the hardware store, found some magnets, got a counter magnet for this size, made a subfloor in this thing. I can put the stick underneath so you don't even see it. Put the person on top, and now she turns. I can move her all over the stage, front, back, wherever I want her, and she, and she, you can do a lot more with the characters. The only way that happens is you put the magnet to one side, not centered, to one side on the disc, and then she'll turn. And you can work, since I have a subfloor in here, I don't have to have my hand on each wand. I can just let it be and go to another wand, work the other characters. And that wand will just stay there. I'm going to shove you in there for a minute. Now, I'm going to turn this just for a moment so that... Oh, wait a minute. Let me show you the sets, what they look like. That would be good. This is uh, like Hansel and Gretel's inside their house. So simple to change acts, and there's nothing more boring than doing it by hand, you know, sticking each piece of paper in there while your audience is waiting. So this makes it simple and pretty. 
and this is a dark one. I'll lower that, and we've got our next stack. Okay, it could have gone quicker than that. I'm just slowing up. Cool? Now, I'm going to show you the side. The side is remarkable. This thing actually does all fold up. You take the curtains off the top, and the side wings fold in. All this folds in, so you have the whole package in like that, and then just put the board somewhere else. This is the problem I was having with that with the smaller wood. It flips. You, you pull <laughs> you pull the curtain up and you battle it. <laughs> so that's why I went by these one by twos, and then I can have two curtains on each one. Three acts, three curtains for each. You got nine, so you'll have maybe five strips of the one by twos. Okay. So simple to change the curtains. This is my subfloor I was talking about. I added another extra um, piece of wood, put on a quarter inch plywood, and this area between the two has got to be the size of the quarter inch plywood, uh, the magnet, and this piece. You don't need much more room than that. And then as I say, you can move these guys all the way around, and if this curtain was up, she could move all the way back. And they're not going to fall. They're just going to stay there. So if you're looking for a nice creative thing to use for the kids, something that's maybe homemade, something that definitely is one of a kind, you can paint the front of the proscenium. You can do Hansel and Gretel and have fun with painting woods. Um, get a little house in there that will stand up on its own. Uh, maybe at the end... Uh, get some lights. <laughs> These are LEDs. I put them on a strip. I need an extension cord to hook them up, but they just lay across and they light up the whole stage. Paper theaters are a lot of fun. I hope you check them out. Thank you.